Good morning and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. We got through shearing yesterday, so today it'll be cleaning up all the messes and stuff and who knows what else. So let's go inside and see what today has in store for us. Hi, buddy. So this is the morning after shearing. So we get to have a look and see how the girls turned out because we didn't have a huge time to look at them. But they're all looking in decent condition. Nobody's shivering, so they're doing pretty good. Some of them you can see little udders. It's not that they're pregnant. It's those are ewes that were weaned off and they're still drying up. Hi, you guys look so fresh and clean right now. Yeah, you do. You look fresh and clean. Not too many nicks, there were a few, but uh, not too many. It's hard to uh, not have a nick when you're going that fast and you have that many sheep, so we're pretty happy with that. You're always a little nervous when you shear because uh, the wool does hide a lot of um, flaws and uh, problems. Um, now we get to see that the udders are drying up properly, so you'll be looking for them to be nice and even. You see how they're, they're even, but they're all shrunken up. You wouldn't want to see a lopsided one or something like that, or one that was dangling really loose, slow down, because then I... Uh, she probably has other problems. And then uh, this one here, she doesn't have any, you can see a little udder on that one and the other, but the one in the middle, nothing. So uh, that would be a first timer. So she's never had a lamb. All the other are moms who had lambs earlier. And as I said yesterday, uh, the, any suffix that are in this group, um, they were ones that lost their lambs. Um, but had no, uh, it was not, not due to their, their fault. So they didn't get put in the call group. Um, anyone who had an issue, a health issue or, um, an utter issue got put into the call pen and these girls, they just, they just had bad luck. So they'll, they'll be, uh, moving on and having lambs again next year. And uh, there's our two Dorset Cross sisters that are just, one's walking by and one went into the feeder there. And with her head right in the feeder behind this girl here, she pops her head out. We can see. Hi. Come on, let's have a look at you. Move out of the way. It's Chewy. So we can see that uh, Despite her ear issues, Chewy grew into a nice little ewe lamb. I have to say, Dorsets are spooky animals. There she is. Hi, Chewy. Don't be afraid from those white girls. They're a little spooky. So she's going to be in a breeding group, and we'll see uh, how her lambs turn out, if they grow ears or not. So it's amazing um, just taking one day off from chores to do the shearing yesterday, how much work we have to do today. And so everybody's getting straw, all the barns, and all the barns are getting hay, and uh, yeah. Just one day and it goes chaos. Putting straw out and trying to move the sheep out of the way. Come on guys, out of the way. Come on, back. Come on, out, out. 
Move. Move. Come on. Come on. Come on. Out you go. Come on. Move it. Move it. Come on. And the dogs that drive them crazy that they can't be doing something. That's why they're all excited like that. Girls, come on, move out of the way. Come on, we're not done here. Come on, come on, come on, there you go. Okay, so this afternoon we are weaning the Suffolk uh, group one and two lambs. So, uh, the ewes are coming out and they're going into a different barn. I was just feeding the bottle babies and I see that Arnie started without me. There's a whole bunch of moms out in the yard here. And these are the moms. So there will be a lot of screaming tonight. So this is why a tripod doesn't work for me because we are actually working all the time and I'm moving all over the place. I'm not in a sedentary place where I can just set up a tripod and film. I gotta walk around and move and work. So uh, we've been getting the ewes separated from the lambs. We locked all the lambs in the creep area as much as we could and then weeded them out. Uh, one of the ewes here isn't feeling well, so we're going to bring her up to the front and give her some antibiotics. Um, and all the rest have been separated out. And in a minute, we'll release uh, the lambs, and we'll show you that. Okay, so the good thing about having a big creep area and lambs that eat creep is that when you put the creep out, they all tend to go in there. And so what we do is when the lambs are all in there, we uh, lock the creep area so that they can't get out. And we have 90% of the lambs separated from the ewes without too much work. And then uh, it's just a matter of running uh, the rest of the ewes up the front and getting them in a trap area. And by hand pulling out the rest of the lambs. which we find is actually way quicker than running them through a chute or something and separating them. So there'll be uh, some screaming for a couple of days and then it'll all be over. These lambs would have been anywhere from 60 to 90 days old, which, uh, which means they're eating solid food on their own and really not getting much from mom anymore. And uh, so, and a lot of, and at this age, they'll they can do a lot of damage to the mother's udders because they're so big and so aggressive that they can actually um, really. Uh, rip them to pieces, bite them, um, scar them. So it's better for the ewes uh, to have them weaned off by now. And the lambs, uh, it's up to them now to make it on their own. And they are, as you could see by their condition, they uh, are quite comfortable with eating feed now and really don't need their moms anymore. But mentally, they still want to be with their lambs, and they still want to be with their moms. So that's why, where the crying comes in. Since we got no snow, we're going to try walk some moms and lambs over to the coveralls. They won't move walking across the yard if there's snow or ice, but uh, right now the ground is frozen, so they should do okay. Here they go. Come on, follow your mommy. Come on. Follow your mom. Max, Max. Oh, 
mum. Max and Ben, come on. She doesn't like the dog. Okay, so now we're putting the big crepe feeder up here. Here, Lammies. So he's bringing the creep area from the back up to the front so we can have that up front area again like we had in the first coverall. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of lambs and ewes in the way. This is where I turn off the camera again to go help. So while we're setting up the new creep area, a few of them have discovered that Outdoors is pretty interesting. That's okay. The good thing about our uh, yard here is, as you can see, there's coveralls all around and gates into separate fields. See there, back there, there's a gate between those two barns. There's a gate back there between them. There's a gate between here. And there's a gate to this field. And then there's another barn back here where we store the hay. So the only opening to the main barn is right here, this runway. So most of the lambs aren't going to go that way. They're just going to stick around in the yard here. So it's a good area for them to just wander around and explore. We don't mind that at all. You saw that last uh, fall when we had all the lambs outside. And once the yard starts to dry up more, that's what we'll be doing here. We'll start letting the lambs out to play even before they go to pasture because like I said pasture we're careful about because um, pastures can get ruined if uh, the sheep go on them too early um, they can um, their feet tramp it up and and make a lot of mud which kills the new uh, shoots as they're trying to grow it also can get mud into their feet which can cause foot infections and uh, also there's the parasite issues so until the pastures are ready we do not let them out on pasture but that doesn't mean we don't let them outside to run and play uh, we do that so today we rolled out a whole bunch of uh, bedding because all the barns needed bedding and for his birthday Arnie said he wanted to roll out some hay so that's what we did all day. We've been rolling out hay. And then I went to find out that he said, I want to roll in the hay. So there's a little bit of miscommunication there. Well, it'd be nice just to roll in the hay at least once a year. <laughs> really, Lynn. When I met you, I couldn't keep you out of the hay. <laughs> and how old would you be today, Arnie? I feel and I'm living. <laughs> so right now it's like 105. <laughs> uh, Arnie couldn't figure out why his legs were sore today and uh, yet he, he did a uh, uh, ram banged into him. It didn't hit him. It just banged into him. But uh, normally Arnie works the shoots and while we're shearing and runs the sheep through the shoots and I do all the wool and pack the wool. And then at the end of uh, last year's shearing, I said, you know, he, no, he had to go on a break or something. So I took over the shoot work and I thought, holy, no wonder he wants shoot work because for the shoot, most of the sheep go right in and they load up. So you just stand there, open a gate, close a gate, open a gate, close a gate. But with the wool, you have to bend down and roll it up and pick it up and then throw it into um, that wool bag. And when you've done that for 
over a hundred fleeces plus all the belly rolls bending down. It's like doing squats all day long. So he's he's like, I don't know, I'm getting old, there's something wrong with my legs, my legs hurt today. And I said, that's right, it, they're wool legs. It's called squatting all day. It's a, uh, you would think that the wool job was the easy job, but it's physically demanding. And tomorrow, somebody asked questions about wool and yeah, um, I haven't addressed uh, wool and how you judge it and the qualities and stuff. So tomorrow, maybe that's what I'll do my video on. Look, I'm here. not a texel breeder, but you got to admire those texels. <laughs> but there's nothing cuter either. But they have such nice temperament. Yeah, that's what I mean. They're just they're just sweet little lambs. Uh, Lynn. Nice color. That's a warmer kiss than you. <laughs> Arnie, you're the one kissing it, and I, I would agree. It's a much warmer kiss. But uh, yeah, the Texel crosses, you oh, just yeah. got, you just got to love them. Hey you guys, how you doing, man? You get the mix? These guys are liking the exploring thing. Oh, how big's that one? So this is a new configuration for them. They'll like this. We like it. It's easier to work for us. And uh, it's it's a much better setup period for the lambs, the ewes, and for the farmers. Um, so we got the new creep area set up today, bedding in all the barns. Um, we moved uh, another group of moms and lambs over, so this barn is 100% full. Actually, that other pen where we brought those ewes and lambs is a little over full. We added four more than we should, just uh, so we could empty up that group. And, oh, we weaned uh, ewes and lambs. We got a lot done. But you see already all the lambs are in here. It's a communal gathering place. They like this kind of thing. And my number 244s went into the other pen. And I fed the bottles to that group and they've never been on a bottle holder. And when I looked to see what lambs were on there, there was my little 44. 44, there's something about that number. Uh, this, well, this one we went over by four, remember? Four too many. I think we take the wall down in a couple days. Okay, so we're gonna call that a day. We're gonna go in and see what we can do about hay in the house. And <laughs> say happy birthday, Darnie. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll say bye for now and uh, hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms, where I think we'll talk about uh, wool. Bye for now.